Hey tribe, welcome to my HGDC HQ tour. I am going to show you around this designated space. I had put off recording this because this is a work in progress. This space is constantly changing and evolving. So I figured it's best just to jump on now, show you what I'm working with. And then as it changes, I'll do an update um, so I've got a really nice sunshine day, really good lighting, so I've not had to use my YouTube lights, so let's start the tour. So when you come into the room, it's quite a big room, this is actually the biggest bedroom in the house that I live in, and it's de 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 designated for HDVC, so as you come in, you can see my knitting machine, which I am part way through using, and it's on a knitting machine table, and it's set up, ready to use, and there's actually some bits and pieces on the floor, um, because I've been trying out a few different stitches, and I've just got my chair, that chair's from Ikea, and over it is my granny square blanket, which I'm about to hang up, um, and vlog and show you that, and that's on wheels so it's really handy because it can go over there to my desk. So carrying on over here we have got these little units from Wilkinson's in the UK and they have got all of the cone yarn, all of the machine knit yarn on them and that's all here in a, in a handy to reach place for my knitting machine. And then on top, I've got various notions. I've got stitch markers, progress keepers, a couple of swatches and an ongoing whip. Um, I've got some needles under here. Got some more cone yarn. I've got my HDDC little sign and a couple of jam jars, one full of spare needles and pens. And this one has got a lot of beads that I brought to go on a beaded, knitted or crocheted jumper and lots of needles. Creaky floorboards in here. The um, windowsill is a little bit of a dumping ground. It's got some pliers which are normally up in a jar up there. Um, it's got, he was made for me by a ex's mum when I graduated for the second time. It's a weaving loom. Oh, that's the jar that all of that lives in up there. And I've got this really nice view. And you can see all of the trees. And in the summer, that'll all be green. Um, and it's a really, really nice view to look out on. And you can see just behind that house there, behind my reflection, the fields which the house backs onto. And I don't think you're going to be able to see because of the reflection. But that land line across there is a big area that you can walk in Leicestershire. Okay, so more random paraphernalia on the windowsill. And then in the sunshine at the moment is my yarn stack. So it goes from this ceiling all the way down to the floor and that is really bright and then it goes over to my desk and on my desk now it doesn't want there we go is pots of ongoing whips my inspiration boards and a little picture and there is a gallery wall that is ongoing um, and I've got more pictures below there which I'm going to put up at some point, but it's a work in progress. And so much goodness over there. So, let's start with the tower. That bag's full of samples, that's full of random yarn, sock yarn, uh, yarn from Yarndale, and the bag right up there is yarn from Nottingham Expo. That is DK, um, and they're sort of packed in colour. Then this one here that isn't showing up very well is Chunky Yarn. Um, let's see, I might have to put the blind down. 
So put the blind down a little bit oh, to try and in this one that's super chunky tweed that's my denim yarn that's Aran yarn and they're all for a project well I've got projects in mind doesn't mean I'm starting them but I, I do have projects in mind for all of them then that tub there is abandoned whips that need frogging and some granny squares and that's more of my DK and then the very one at the bottom is all of my chunkies and my errands and I have some projects for some of that, some of it. In my rest and knit face bag is more yarn which came out of this middle tub and I have been slowly going through my frogged yarn and abandoned whips to make balls like this. Um, and then as you can see there's little scraps on the floor. Um, and that is just part and parcel of a yarny life. This little picture down here was made by my mother. It's been really sun bleached over the years. She made that in 2002, um, but I've still got it. And the frame used to be quite a bright, brilliant blue, but I think I'll always keep that. And then down here is more yarn. <laughs> Um, there's a great big bag of yarn that I brought with sort of random yarn on top, socks to be scrapped and balls that just seem to have fallen out and I've not put back so I just stashed them down there. And then if we go into this wonderful tub, which is in the sunshine. I've got some yarn that I was gifted and I've been playing with it. Um, and it's this Sadar Jouet. I think that's how you say it. And it says fashion knitting. And it's this, it's quite flat this yarn. And it's got the shine to it and it's a wonderful pink. Um, and it's, I think it's made out of, let me double check. There's 50 grams. And it's 56% 50, cotton, 46% nylon. And we do not want to focus. Come on. No. There we go. 56% cotton, 44% nylon. And then in my tub. All of these half squares are to go with the squares there for a blanket that I'm making out of granny squares inspired by um, quilting books like embroidery. Um, so there's loads of those there and then this is the scrap yarn projects that I'm working on with the scrap yarn that I've rescued from all of my frogged projects. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And then further underneath is more yarn and my crochet hooks. And that's all living here in that spot of sunshine. And for anyone that's concerned that it would get bleached, don't worry, there really hasn't been any sunshine for weeks and weeks. And this is the first time that it's popped out. And usually I leave the blinds down so it won't get bleached. So don't worry about my stash. These are bits and pieces I have ordered for a new project I'm going to try and make, which includes my jewellery making past and my crochet designs. I've got another sign here made by my mum. It's got two little lovebirds and I really, really like that one. And these are just um, glue dots and I use them to stick stuff in my journals so they're always lying around. And then I've got these two notice boards there's not a lot on them at the moment, but they, I do find that they're a really nice backdrop when I'm working on this desk. So it's just got my logos, granny squares of course, and some wonderful quotes. And then, here, this is a bit I can't wait to go through. <laughs> I have got this huge cupboard 
that is all personal paperwork and it just lives there under my desk. This is my second knitting machine and the attachments. Normally they live over there, but because I've been working on that, they're over here for now. And as I said, all of that frames and whatnot is to go on the gallery wall up here. And that bag of yarn needs to go into the yarn tower. <laughs> Mount stash. No, we don't want to focus. So, I've got all my Christmas cards and birthday cards there, my printer, a couple of other bits and bobs that just need pussing away, my iPad, some sticky notes. And then in this cupboard, if we move my YouTube light out of the way, because that's where that one lives, and the huge amount of personal paperwork that we all try to hide. I have got this cupboard and it's absolutely huge and it's great because it's got my overlocker, my sewing machine. That is stuff that needs sorting to be honest. It's old cards, memories, bits of paperwork, random stuff needs emptying and getting rid of. Um, that's the attachment for my knitting machine, my guillotine. In here is all of my beads and in there is like um, bits and pieces for my journaling. It used to be that the majority of this was all um, jewellery making and journaling. I've just condensed it to that now, which is great because I know where everything is. It's really easy to get to. And then these two are all my sewing supplies. So fabric, threads, um, some patterns and whatnot, which I'm hoping to get a lot more use of and use these wonderful machines a whole lot more so I can make more of a handmade wardrobe. But on top of this huge cupboard is everything that I've still got that I've made. So, Grandad's blanket, a chevron ripple blanket, a scrap blanket. That one looks like Lego blocks. Um, if you look on my blanket stack, you'll see that one. It's made out of granny squares in all different colours. That's a scrap granny stripe blanket. That's a lark's foot blanket. The yellow one is a granny stripe blanket in an ombre effect. That huge one is a giant granny square blanket. That is a zip pouch I made. That's some granny squares I made and didn't do anything with. But I'm loving the pink. That is enamoured. There's my granny bag. Promise is hidden under there. That's risen, inspirited, inspirited too, pinnacle. My jumper my nanny made, the first knitted jumper I made, that one is, uh, I can't remember the pattern but it's made by hem and it's got that wonderful fringing on it and then that's one that I made after making that, um, it's cropped, it's got capped sleeves um, and it's got slightly different fringing and a design at the back which I just made when I was playing around and that one won't be released. See, I love seeing the piles of things up there that I've made and I'm looking forward to getting all the way up to the ceiling by the end of the year with blankets and goodness knows what. The fringing is off Stella and then the lighter neutral one granny squares next to it under the plastic handles are is Stella too. And then over here I have got tripod, wrapping paper, interfacing, and then I've got this wonderful, huge, um, wonderful, huge shelving unit. So underneath it, it's an empty tub. It's a backdrop for photos, knitting machine accessories, and then various folders from uni and books on gardening and whatnot that need a home. And um, they might end up going on here. There are little notice boards. That is some granny, some um, fairy lights that really need untangling. And then the this shelf has got my journals. So since I was 16, I've kept a journal. So in here is all my written journals up to this. And then I've got some textbook type, like a sketchbook, 
Um, something I put together when I was learning Italian and some colouring books. So I don't really use my journals, but sometimes I will go back and look at them and there's no way I could get rid of them all. So that is 15, 16 years worth of my life there in writing. The next shelf up, I've got my wonderful Mr. B yarn that I got from Nottingham Yarn Festival. Um, and then these are various magazines, books, um, an old crochet planner, an old journal that isn't the A4 size so it couldn't go down below. That is full of quotes, I'll show you. It's got my affirmations and it's got all of these quote pages on it, which I absolutely love. And I might break some of these up and stick them in my current journal. And the idea is, is when I spin a bit down, I would just come and have a look at these, or if I just needed to focus. I made that back in 2016. Um, can go on now. I've got various notebooks, journals, knitting machine patterns, journals, well, well they're my planners from the last two years, um, sewing patterns, and then these are all crochet and knitting magazines, and some of them have got designs earmarked as well. And then up and next, another level, you've got more magazines, books, more yarn, all of this is all my printed patterns, more books there for inspiration, my yarn winder, pins, spare measuring tape, and up again, this one's pretty empty. It's got a spare blanket, some more yarn. Um, that's empty, it was given to me by a friend. And up above, my wonderful project bags from Josie Rose, which I use very often. But I haven't really been making anything at the moment, so they're empty right now. And then this is all my yarn ends that I've been collecting over the last couple of weeks, months, a little while. So, and then this little tin down here was painted by my nanny. And so that is my HDDCHQ. I know how blessed and lucky I am to have this space because it's the largest bedroom in my house and it's designated to HDDC. Um, it's a place that I can come in, I can store everything I've made, I can work on projects, I can get inspiration, I've got easy access to all my yarn, all of my books and whatnot are all there, easy to help, ready to help me. And then my new venture, my knitting machine, is all here as well. I will admit, I don't spend a lot of time in here. It's more to come in, grab something and go out again because I tend to crochet or knit in my room or on my sofa or when I'm out and about. I don't really sit in here to do it. Um, but I do sit in here to use my knitting machine but I only use that for a couple of hours at a time. Um, I'd like to get my quote wall, my gallery wall done and eventually I'd like to replace that for the white cube unit storage um, and it would go across that wall entirely and get rid of that cupboard and then this, everything in there and all of those would just be in the cube unit as well as my yarn. But I'm going to leave that for now because I'm saving hard so that I can eventually buy my own place. So I don't want to invest any more in like more permanent furniture until I've got my own place. I just look at that view out of that window. It's so beautiful. Another reason why I don't spend a lot of time in HGH, HG DC HQ is because the walls in this house are paper thin and that bedroom backs onto adjoins the bedroom of next door. I can hear everything they say, I can hear their alarms going off and I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable, almost like there's someone in the room 
um, which is why I don't sleep in there. I sleep in the smaller room because it's not got an adjoining wall to a neighbour. And I know I'm a highly sensitive person and just having that person there all the time really annoys me. Um, and I would record in there more often, but again, I know they can hear me. So although I've just recorded that walk round, I just feel really self-conscious and I talk a lot quieter. I try to just get whatever done. Um, so if I do spend time in there, I just put my headphones in to block out the fact that there's this presence there on the other side of the wall. Like I can hear them playing at Xbox, I can hear their alarms going off in the morning. It's just a bit, so they can definitely hear me talking to you. And that makes me feel just a little bit weird. Um, so although it's a great space, it doesn't get used as much as it could because unfortunately it, the soundproofing is just non-existent um and my neighbors are always in always so but it's okay because there's some great spots in the house that i love to record in i love to record downstairs next to all of my books um and sometimes i record here in my room though normally not lying back but my back's really hurting so just letting it decompress for a few minutes um yeah so i do really really like my hq eventually i know that that space will morph into um a different space in my own home when i get get my own place um and i've got a pretty strong vision of what that's going to look like um i've already got the pinterest board for it i already know the furniture i already know i already know everything um so it's just making that happen but for now i've got this amazing space and i love going in there and just looking at all the yarn it's so amazing so i hope you've enjoyed my tour um comment below where you keep your yarn stash so that everyone can get ideas from you and so we can all have a good chat and i will see you again soon in the next video don't forget to press like thumbs up and subscribe see you soon tribe <laughs>